first of all, um, it is such an honor to be a member of, maybe turn me down just a little bit, I guess. Um, an honor to be a member of the Foursquare Church here in Oxnard. We've been attending for quite a while. And um, we, we're not picky about home church, um, but we are. And one of the things that we loved is that everyone's authentic and we've never left a Sunday service um, not full. We've always left full. And no matter who you are, no matter what experience you've had with God, um, if you don't have a home church, come back to this church. Uh, whether you're Catholic, Orthodox, just come back here to hear more about the Word of God because it's the Word of God that we're going to talk about tonight. And we just want you to know that um, we are so thankful, Tammy, Steve, the team, thank you for loving us and calling us into the family of God here. And I love Oxnard. I really have a special place for Oxnard. This is my amazing bride, Kanae. She, um, we've, been, we've been talking about some things in the last four or five months um, about what God really has for us in 2019. And we're not the couple saying, oh, this is the year for breakthrough and blah, 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 blah. Um, but we really believe <laughs> that this year is going to be really unique. And I'm very careful with what I say. Um, this is gonna be a very special year for us and, and, our, and our marriage, um, our family, and seeing what God has for us as a couple. Um, Kane is born and raised in Mexico. Uh, yo, yo, yo hablo un poquito español porque mi esposa es mexicana. Los amo, los amo, Dios te bendiga. Gracias por tu amor. Gracias por tu oraciones para mí y para mi ministerio y para mi familia. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for your prayers for our ministry, our family, um, and uh, for us. Uh, we love you. We love Mexico. We're praying for Mexico. We're praying for the United States. We're praying for the world. Um, and we just want to tell you all we love you. And um, I asked my wife if she would do the honors to hold this Yemenite shofar that I've had it was given by a four-square Spanish church to me in 2003 before I moved to America. And um, this trumpet, if you don't mind holding it, please, please is a, sorry if you're vegan, it's a, it's, it's a, uh, it's part of an animal. And um, this, this in biblical times, uh, was used to do many things. I don't know how to actually properly blow this according to the professionals as far as the different calls for war, for assembly, for victory. And um, there are only a few times that I've been able to, um, or been led to, to blow the, tr the shofar, um, and I felt led tonight. And if you don't just, if you don't mind just, lifting your hands to the, the sky. And I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of the victory in your life that you are praying for, that you are hoping for as we shout and sound the trumpet of victory. That side a little lower, please. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Thank you. I am so blessed. Let me tell you, I'm a preacher that has preached three and a half, mil three and a half thousand times to eight million people face to face in 70 countries. I have canceled out of 3,500 speaking engagements, exactly 27. Most of them were two years ago before I nearly died in 2016. I texted Steve Abraham yesterday morning and I said, simply, I have no voice. 
and I said, pray. I texted 60 people, didn't want to put on Instagram because I don't want my speaking engagements next week freaking out. <laughs> but I actually had been whispering for 36 hours this week. And I had to go to the office at Life Without Limbs, which is our ministry. And I had five hours of meetings back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Whispering three hours of it. Okay? I just came back from Ireland and I got a bug from the airplane, blah, 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 doesn't matter. We started our Daniel fast and then I've been joining the church staff. Last two days, no food. We'll finish that with you tomorrow. But I want you to know, literally, I texted Steve. I have no voice. He said, got it. We'll pray. It's just an attack. I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I couldn't do phone calls. I had to whisper. And all of a sudden, in the middle of a meeting, at 12 o'clock, I'm going to tell you, on the dot, I'm not, st like people saying, well, stop talking. <laughs> stop whispering. Go to bed. Get a hot shower. Drink this. Do that. No, I know what I got to do. I whispered for three hours and right on the dot, 12 o'clock, my voice started coming back. You can ask my staff. And you know what happened? I finished. We have witnesses, uh, Andy and Scott Strandall, who picked up this table from my office and for tonight. And they could see I did not have a voice. And they said, we're going to pray. I texted Steve Abraham at 2 p.m. that day and said, the voice has absolutely come back. And he said, good, because all our staff started praying at 12 to 12.30. I'm like, that's exactly when my voice came back. Anyways, anyways. Uh, everyone say, anyways. I want, to, I want to say how special tonight is for me. It's 2019. I normally get up and preach the gospel to win souls for Jesus. I never converted anybody. It's all the Holy Spirit. We've seen over a million come forward and say yes to Jesus in 16 years of preaching. But tonight's special because... On the 6th of January that just passed, I was at Gateway Conference, and at Gateway, I got to encourage the believers. Tonight, if you don't know Jesus, I'll maybe drop a little couple things here and there, but tonight's really more mainly towards those who believe. Don't get discouraged if you don't know who Jesus is. We've got, I'll, I'll address you maybe at the very end, but this is the only second of three conferences I'm doing for the entire year. So I was really asking God, God, what would you like me to teach? And I love that word inspirational because inspiration is different than motivation. Sometimes you're motivated and sometimes you're not. But when you're inspired, you're inspired. Amen. And what I want you to know is there is nothing more than I can inspire you on than the things that have inspired me. Now let me clarify. Not the things that just inspired my spirit but inspired me to do something different in my own walk with God. And I am most inspired to inspire you, not based on what someone told me to do, nor just an idea, but something that I changed in my walk with Jesus Christ 21 years on in my life with Him. I really ask you to take notes tonight. We are going to fly. Everyone say, fly. There's going to be a lot of information, a lot of verses we're going to cover, but there is a reason. Pastor Steve Abraham asked me to speak about revival. I want you to think for a second, what does revival actually look like without even going to a reference of a previous revival that we have actually defined in our Christian theology thus far as we know it? Revival. You know, Australia has a Christian prime minister. And the Christians were excited. But even when you have a Christian prime minister and he makes laws, someone's got to do it. 
someone's got to implement it. Now, if the world of ministry department for social justice and social causes are got to do with foster and adoption, the president or prime minister makes the law, brings money, sets the governance. Now, we all know that most city officials in Oxnard in the last two years have found not to be so trustworthy lately. But we know that God is moving. Can I hear an amen? amen? Trust me, God is moving in Oxnard. Amen. And there is a shift going on. I only live 25 minutes from here. And I pray for Oxnard. I pray for change. I pray for revival. I pray. And yes, I pray for the United States of America and all that stuff, yes, on a government level and this and that, yes. I pray for the education system. But I pray first for my own city. I pray first, even before that, for my own home. Real quick question, can you be honest with me? Ready? You've only got two seconds to actually show me your hand if you say yes, or else you're going to be thinking about it too much. Ready? Put your hand up if you struggle to pray for more than five minutes a day. Go. Look at the room. Keep your hand up. Put your hand down. Who would like to learn how to pray for more than five minutes a day? Awesome. This is what you're going to get. Ready? All right. Good. This is a stapled couple of pages. So I had a conversation with my wife. Before I move on, I need to give you the title of tonight's message. It's called, Revival is Reading the Bible. It's really complex. It's not. I put a post on Instagram, I said, why is it so hard, sorry, why is it so easy to pick up a newspaper, and why is it so hard to pick up the Word of God? You know, if you have your Bibles in your hand, hold it up in the air. Look at these Bibles. People were killed because they had these in their hands. There is so many things, there are so many things that sets apart this book than any other book. You want to know what it is? Everything. Because there is not a book like it. There's some similarities, but there is a scripture in 2 Timothy 3.16 where it says... All scripture is God breathed. God is alive. I believe in the power of prayer. And so my conversation with my wife was, is will God move if I don't pray? I had a conversation as I was reading the Bible 45 days in a row. It felt so good to read the Bible from August to September 15th. 45 days in a row. A chapter a day. It takes six minutes. Six Minutes. I'll tell you why it's so hard. Because someone doesn't want you to open it. I don't care if you believe that God is God. So does the devil. He knows that God is God. But are you living with God? Knowing God. Now listen. Some of us have Catholic and Orthodox relatives. When you talk to them, here is a tip. Don't talk to them about the differences. Go and have a Bible study with them and start in the book of John and see how the Word of God changes their life and questions come up because actually most priests don't talk about the Bible. They talk about the saints. I'm not putting the Catholic Church down, but it's Jesus. I was brought up in a traditional church. Do you understand? Do you want to know what happened to my arms and legs? I raised them in church. That's a bad joke. Segregated seating. So I wouldn't lay my hand on anybody. You're not allowed to marry outside the church. You're not allowed to visit another church. 
If the church actually finds that you were sexually active before marriage, they excommunicate you and never actually bring you back into the congregation. I don't know where scripture says that and I don't know where the grace of God is there. And there are some legalities of man's religion, rituals, traditions, identity, and things that were done in the name of Jesus that are a little bit more man-created than God created. On the other side, there are the charismatics who do speak in tongues. I don't speak in tongues. I'm not belittling the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to your faith. I'm not here to share doctrinal things, but I'm here to share with you that I have even visited a church a couple weeks ago where it, they were so bold in a way they had everyone stand up and shout out what they are um, struggling with. The, 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 the couple that was singing the worship all the way with two kids, the man was saying, pornography, bitterness, anger, ba, 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 ba. And then his wife said, anger. <laughs> and my heart was so heavy. Because we are in this realm of we just need to usher in the Holy Spirit and everything's going to be fine. We just need to get a Christian prime minister in Australia and everything's going to be fine. No, where the rubber hits the road, it's actually the hands and feet of God who are doing what God's told them to do. Amen? It's not about the laws up there, yet at the same time, I love contradicting myself so many times, but yet at the same time, everyone say, yet at the same time, I am, I, I don't know if this is an Aussie word, but flabbergasted. <laughs> I just can't believe that the American church has not yet had a press conference under the umbrella of God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, to wash each other's feet. Don't worry, a lot of Catholics and Orthodox are going to be in heaven. Church, a lot of Catholics and Orthodox are going to be in heaven. But where the rubber hits the road is what did you do to draw them closer to Jesus? And the conversation that we had was, if I don't pray for it, will it actually happen? And in the 45 days of me um, you know, having a press conference, so to call the country into fasting and prayer, washing each other's feet, forgiving each other. I want you to sh see this photo. This is from Ukraine, April 2017. Um, this is a photo. Oh, I'm in the way. <laughs> this is the Senate, the House of Representatives, and everyone but the president and the Ukraine federal level with 20 million civilians from Ukraine watching live TV. It was the highest rated 90 minutes of TV viewership in that country for the last five years as the whole country watched me talk to them about the 500 year reformation and the importance of the Bible being at the front cornerstone of every country, honoring God with every law. If you look into that photo a little closer, you'll actually see that they're not sitting on their seats, they're on their knees as I prayed. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, God says, if my people humble themselves and come and pray to me, I will hear their prayers and forgive them of their sins and heal their land. Heal their land. My brothers and sisters, I'm so sorry, sorry to be strong, yet at the same time, I am not. Have you in your life as a civilian citizen here in Oxnard, when have we ever asked God to forgive the sins of Oxnard? I have. You have a loved one who doesn't know Jesus. What's their name? This document, if you don't pray for it, then angels technically, let me reverse the way I was saying it. The Bible says that when I pray for something or someone, we are praying against powers and principalities of darkness. That when we pray, angels come to fight the demons. Amen. So the question we had was, if I don't pray, are they fighting for me? 
You know, you go to church, it's a hi, hi, I'm praying for you. You just lied in church. This is a 1,500 word prayer. It takes me 11 minutes a day to read this prayer. It takes me six minutes to read a chapter of the Bible. If you want a tip, do a psalm, then a prophet, then a gospel. Go to the second chapter of Psalm, second chapter of Proverbs, second chapter of John. It sounds like it's so scientific that I have scientifically figured out the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, that's the charismatics who are praying for change, who are praying for the homeless, which is awesome, but where is the rubber in the middle where it hits the road? And it's not this or that, it's and, and, together. Where I may not believe exactly what Steve and Tammy believe, I don't believe exactly what my wife believes on every single level, except that she's the most beautiful woman on planet Earth. <laughs> but where are you? Where are you? Um, so Jesus is the rock, amen? amen? I love the verse in the Bible where it says, unless you become like a child, you're not gonna go to heaven. Like faith, we think we're figuring it out. No, what would the first thing be when a child is adopted into a home? Yeah, he talks to me. He doesn't call me dad straight away. He talks to me. Friendship, ready? Think of your best friend. Ready? Think of your best friend, okay? Do you spend two hours with them a month? That's eight minutes a day. Are they your best friend? What about your best friend, Jesus? If you want to get out of the rut and the weeds and the daily ups and downs, ups and downs, I'm so good because this happened. I'm so bad because this happened. I'm so good because this happened. I'm so bad. I'm not that guy. I don't do the ups and downs, ups and downs. I get really high highs and really low lows. And they're about two months at a time. None of us are immune to it. If you don't want to focus on the circumstances in your life, then focus on your friendship with Jesus, which is actually defined the beginning and the end and duration, communication, communication. I could care less about how much you're praying for, Oxnard, until you tell me how many homeless people have you fed. Could care less. Could care less. God, heal our land. Yeah, heal me. I love this where it says, this is exciting. John 5, 16 to 19. I wasn't planning on sharing this. God used Pastor Andy to share this. This is huge. I'm going to have to read this because I don't have it typed out. John 5, 16 to 19. Ready? You know that verse where it says, and the, right, the prayer of a righteous man, what? Avails much. What was really cool was a couple words beforehand. And if you actually read that verse, it's going to be up any second now. Sorry. My, my bad. James 5. That's why they stole because I changed my mind. <laughs> Good, I'm not in your way. Ready? Everyone say, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. I'm gonna stop there. Ready? Watch this. We can have the boldness and the moving of the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do. We are not God. The moment we think that we can scientifically figure out and attract the Holy Spirit anywhere is the moment we actually don't really believe the Bible. Bible is really clear. You don't know how the Holy Spirit's gonna move. Just like the wind, from where it comes, where is it going? 
We know the principles of worship. We know the principles of obedience. We know the principles of sacrifice. But don't tell me that anyone has going to now teach me because they've studied the presence of God that they know how to usher in. No. In that same realm of thinking, all these people saying, I struggle with this, 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 and the anger, I don't think anyone sat them down to say, hey, do you want counseling? Who knows that dentists are used by God for my teeth? Who knows that psychologists are used by God for my mental health? Get counseling. Don't just pray it away. Confess your trespasses first to God. No one can be in full effect unless they are healed. There is still some healing in my heart. There is always going to be healing in my heart. There is always going to be a Nick Vujicic under construction. But if you're waiting for God to do something, then my tip is, suggestion is, go back to what he's already told you to do. I love what Pastor Steve said on Sunday. God's going to do his part, but he ain't going to do yours. Let's finish this. Sorry. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone turns him back, keep going. Or is there a next verse? I know what the next verse is. Just go to 20. We'll read it together, please. It's very important. It will cover a multitude of sins. What we got to know is that we will never be perfect. Amen. And we can always compare ourselves to everyone else. No. Be focused. Whip your flesh into order. Get command over your life of your flesh. Get accountability. Get people to pray for you. Cancel, shut down your social media. Get rid of cable. Fast, pray, but simply Talk to him and read the word. Because the bottom, bottom of bottom lines is faith. You will never receive so much faith in your life like the feeding of faith that the Holy Spirit gives you personally, directly from his hand as we hear the word of God it produces faith. And he will give you wisdom. I want you to write these words down. Write this down. Acknowledge who he is. Thank him. Ask him for wisdom, joy, strength, protection, Discernment. Write it all down. I know it sounds like homework, but baby, this is basic stuff that's changed my life. And I have seen miracles. And this has changed my life more than witnessing them. Amen? So, what is salvation? Everyone take a deep breath in and out. Awesome. There was a man who was in his house. A fiction illustration. He's on the first floor of two floors. 
And bit by bit, his house is deteriorating. There's termites, then there's flooding, the drywall peels off, and he's all alone. He's in knee deep of sewerage. Now in his house, furniture floating around, his house is a mess. And what happens? A contractor comes and knocks on the door and says, let me help you. And he says, well, how are you going to fix it? How did this guy actually have such a mess? Well, bit by bit, he actually realized that there was this persistent guest that kept on coming. And he kept on ruining his house bit by bit. And it was the devil. And he sent the contractor away and he said, no, I can handle this. I don't even know you. You don't, you don't can tell me your plan. The devil comes back and he keeps on messing and messing and messing with you. The contractor comes back and says, my name is Jesus and I know who that guy is that's persistently breaking your life apart. And if you let me in, I can not only fix what he's done bit by bit, one day at a time, by my love and by my grace, but I want to protect you and be with you. He finally comes to a point of desperation where he allows the contractor in and he is a carpenter. His name is Jesus. He fixes his whole house and now he feels pretty good. Have you ever given your life to Jesus and you felt amazing? And then what happens two weeks later? (laughs) Knock, knock, knock. Oh, I wonder who that is. And the devil comes in. Now, how does the devil come in when that house is filled with Jesus? Well, what happens in the transition, in my opinion, in my personal experience, where we invite him into our life as at first an accessory at times, I'm not belittling your conversion, but what happens more and more later on in your walk with God, we kind of just kind of talk to him when we kind of need him. How much more do you pray when you need him? So we kind of put Jesus upstairs in a room. Jesus, there's a room for you upstairs and I'll come to you once a week and we'll talk. Is that cool? Jesus says, well, I'll take anything you give me. And now Jesus is in the room and he's sitting on the couch downstairs, loving it, feet up, eating popcorn, watching NFL. (laughs) Bang, bang, bang. (gasps) It's the devil. It's like, okay, it's all right. I'm ready this time. I know Jesus is up there, so if I ever need him. And he goes to the door and he's ready to shut the door back in the devil's face. But he opens it and the devil grabs him, pushes him against the wall, beats him up till he's shaking. And the devil goes to every single room of the house, destroys everything again, except for the room where Jesus was at. The man finally got up. He had enough strength to go upstairs. said, Jesus, where were you? I needed you. He said, well, you've only invited me as a guest, not the owner of the house. When you actually give me the keys, the keys to your house, when someone knocks on the door, the guest never opens the door. It's the owner of the house. Give me your house. If you want to keep your life, You will lose it. If you can lose your life to Jesus, you actually live. Give him. Give him. And that's the truth. My grandfather... 94 years old, they said, give me one piece of advice. He said, never add to the gospel, never subtract from the gospel. You know what most of the churches have done around the West? Is then twist that, give him the key and everything you want and make sure you give him your money. 
Have you ever been on the missions trip? I recommend you do that before you write a check toward a missions trip. Don't go alone. Don't send your children. Go with your children. You have no idea how actually we selfishly are every day until God reveals it to us. Hallelujah. And may he search our hearts. Sure, give to the church, but give him your time. Yeah. He wants your friendship. Amen. Amen. We're going to fly through these verses really quick because I really want to uh, not talk about it, but fly through them as references. Here we go. Number one, we've got um, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Common one I always use. Be anxious for nothing. Everyone say, yeah, right. But in everything by prayer and petition. Corey, can you come up, please, with the band? By, but in everything by prayer and petition and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Here is my personal revelation. Ready? I had a conversation with the Lord. So just to finish this, if I have a sibling or a mum or a dad or a stepdad or a stepmum or a friend or a neighbor or a work colleague or a boss or the one that I always see at the grocery store, if I don't pray for them, who's praying for them? I specifically by name pray for the pastors here every day. I pray for about 50 people a day. It's not that hard. 11 minutes. A little bit more than you spend with your best friend. Amen? Amen. Present your request to God. I had a conversation with God about 90 days ago. As I was reading through the Gospels, I went through John and then Matthew. And I asked myself, is it sin that I don't pray for arms and legs? <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? No joke, no exaggeration. 800 million people in China know exactly who I am without arms and legs. 800 million people outside of China know exactly who I am. I've addressed 10 governments, 18 presidents with no arms and legs. I've been on media to 1.6 billion people. What it would do if God actually gave me miraculously arms and legs? What would that actually do to the no-sayers? Very interesting thought. So I said, by God, I actually can't be honest in that prayer because I actually don't want to. I have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case you say yes. But I don't want to. If you really want me to start praying for arms and legs, Every single day, you need to give me the desire for it. And guess what happened the next day? I was in my wheelchair up on our hill, and I've never been bogged on my own property. I got bogged. I was alone, no phone, 250 feet between where I was to my home like this. It takes a lot of muscles and energy to do this. My caregiver looked at me and says, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. He said, what happened? I said, I got bogged. He's a big guy, Pete. Some of you know him. Big guy. Took him 10 minutes to get my wheelchair out of that hole that I was in. Ridiculous. Next day, we went to Oxnard Beach, my favorite city in the world, Oxnard. Went to Oxnard Beach. Took my tank chair, you know, the tank like tracks, 250 feet, 150, 250 feet from our Airbnb. Guess what? Stopped. Guess what I had to do? Walked 250 feet on hot sand. No caregiver. Next day, happened again. My caregiver came, rescued it, and then it happened again electrical fault 
And by that time, I'm like, oh, three days in a row? Duh. Wouldn't it be nice to have arms and legs, Nick? Well, I guess I should start praying for them. Guess what happened the next day? I didn't pray for arms and legs. And I was at my home in that wheelchair that I was walking up here with, my front right, left wheel, right wheel, front one of my front wheels fell off my wheelchair. Four days in a row. Do you think that's luck, chance, or coincidence? No. But did God hear my prayer? Yes. Do I know if God's going to give me arms and legs? No, but I actually want them. And I'm praying for them. What's going to happen if he never does it? Does it? I don't care. Because my salvation is my joy. I am a redeemed son of Jesus. Redeemed son of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. I am living forever. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, arms and legs or not. I will serve my God. Rich or poor, I will serve my King. Holy Spirit gifts like you or not, I will still be faithful in all that I have because greater does He have for me and my family when I give Him the key to my home and my all. I am all in. I am all in. My wife and I were going to start orphanages in Mexico and Serbia. We now sponsor 15 children. We have four kids, 15, 19 children. We have seen that God moves when we move. But I don't move for Him to move. I move because of His love. And I read my Bible because of His love. And I will look myself at times in the mirror and look, you're talking about an evangelist who's escaped death three times. And I look myself in the mirror sometimes and I look me right in the eyeball and say, Nick, shut up. Shut up. You are not too busy for God. Nothing should frustrate you. Be slow to anger. I have things like, God, rid me of my selfishness. Ask God to help you to pray. And He will. And that, that, ready? This, this. Stand up, stand up. This is the key, ready? Because revival ain't starting until you experience it. Because revival ain't starting until you are like this with Jesus. Me and Jesus, we're like this. Am I perfect? No. But don't let the devil say, oh, you're not good enough. And you need to have those gifts of the Holy Spirit. No, you don't. Not all the gifts of the Holy Spirit are resorted to everyone. But there is one thing that we all need is Jesus, 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 Jesus. What idol do you worship, my friends? So many single women, 10 to 1 ratio. I know to, so many more righteous, patient women of God waiting than 10 to 1 man of God. But don't let this ideology of being married become your idol. 
Oh God, I love you. And what's your brain saying? Deep, 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 deep down in your subconscious because I know one day you're going to give me my husband. Pure worship. It's as if you've got 30 seconds to breathe. He maybe never gave you everything you wanted, but he always gave you what you needed. That's why we live today as if we plan for a thousand years, yet we live today as if it is our last. May God convict us as He wishes to reveal to you any idols that you're worshiping deep, 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 deep down. Ideas deep, 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 deep down. There is nothing wrong with desiring what you desire. Don't get me wrong. Present your requests to God. And you know the fruit of that is when you're joyous. I love God because He sent His Son to die on the cross for me and I'm going to live for Him and serve Him until I die. And I'm praying that He gives me a husband. And if He does not, I will still serve my King. Everyone say, Jesus! Jesus! We're going to do two altar calls tonight. The second one will be for the people who don't know Jesus, but the first one is now. Some of you still have money as your idol. Some of you need to start counseling with someone at this church for your pornographic addictions. The sexual, emotional, verbal abuse that has happened in your life. Some of you have this idea that you need to feel what they're feeling on stage. <laughs> you know what I love about Jesus? If Jesus didn't meet you where you were at, then none of us would have met him. He's still going to meet you where you're at. As the Holy Spirit himself convicts, Prayer team, if you want to come up the front. If you want prayer for, you can ask him. But this is a general call for all the believers. God has revealed to you some things that are standing in the way. Lack of discipline. Get it done. Ask your wife, please, please. Help me to get rid of this. Help me to stop this. Help me to be accountable. You need to get some alcoholic bottles out of your kitchen tonight. You need to burn some secret books. You need to delete some contacts in your phone. Right now, I'm believing right now for a big wave of people wherever you are. Come and lay it down at the foot of the cross. Repent, confess your sin that you would be healed and made whole and begin a new journey with Him daily as your best friend in 2019. If that's you, move now. I believe for this whole place to be filled. Stop thinking about it. Stop thinking about it. Move. I'm believing for 80 people counting from now. One, two, three, move. You see someone coming down? Clap them on down. Five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Come on. There's going to be a lot more people coming down. That's it. Come on. Come on. That's 25, 26, 31, 33. Just come right up to the people up the front. Just come up. If you don't see anybody, just come up over here. Come, come to me. Come this way. Yep. Come. Come to the center. That's it. Marriages are on the rocks, not because of your wife's attitude, but because of our own flesh. 
I'm waiting for another 40 people to come forward right now. Move. The Holy Spirit is here. He's ready to touch you. He's ready to break your chains. That's another one, two, three, four. Come on down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Come on, church. Let's give God a shout of praise for what He's doing tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Staff, can we keep on pushing those people through? They're stuck in the aisle. Bring them through closer to me, if anything. Thank you. Hallelujah. Just so I can see the room better, can I politely, kindly ask for your grace that if you're standing at a seat to sit down, if you are watching online and you need to talk to somebody, go to info at newlifeoxnard.com. Email that info at newlifeoxnard.com. But I believe, can you all hear me okay? I want you to know that tonight, put your hand up if this is your first time to this church. Raise your hand. This is your first time to this church. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome. Andrew, you're over there. Everyone look at me for a second. From the overflow room, listen very carefully. Everyone's now seated in your seat. If there is anyone who is sitting in your seat and you do not know who Jesus is, let me tell you, we may have to pray a little quieter, sorry. Sorry, it sounds ridiculous, but ready for this room, because I know you can hear them too. Focus, ready? You, do you know Jesus? Do you know him because you were baptized as a baby and your parents were Catholic? Is that how you think you know him or do you know him? Jesus was different than anybody else. He said he was God in the flesh. He died for our sins. No matter how hard we try, we will never be good enough for heaven. Amen, church? And God, knowing that, he sent his son Jesus, who was holy, who was God, who rose other people from the dead before he died on the cross, was, was, was buried in a tomb for three days and he rose again. Forget about arms and legs. Forget about money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame and fortune. We die. That's a disability, but Jesus rose from the dead and there is no other cure than resurrection. For anybody here tonight, if you know that you need to make your life right with Jesus, because I don't want to mix you with this crowd at the front, you can say, Nick, you know what? Something touched my heart, and I know that my strength is not enough. I know that my wisdom is not enough, and I know that the things of this earth can never give me enough. I know I cannot change the hearts of those who will love me. I cannot forgive those who hurt me, who betrayed me, who left me alone who abandoned me. I have a fear that I'm going to turn into them myself. I know I cannot do this on my own. I need you, God, now. If that's you, stand to your feet. Say, if you know that you need to give your life to Jesus and you do not have an active relationship with Jesus Christ, stand to your feet here and the overflow. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Anybody else? Keep standing. Seventeen in the overflow room. I can't see you, but stand. Stand. I'm waiting for another ten more people to say, you know what, Nick? I'm done. I'm through. I can't do this on my own. I want to know that if God has a plan for my life, I want to know what God has for me. Come on. Ten more people. Stand. 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 
Get up. There we go. Stand, stand, stand all across this place. That's it. Today's the day. Today's the day. Today's the day. Do not wait anymore. Hallelujah. Those people standing in this room still stand. Look at me. I want you to do me something. It's wonderful for you to even just say a prayer, but we want to help you with the next steps. I want to say a prayer for you now, and we want to give you a gift tonight. We will not force you to give us any contact details, but I want you to know, if you sit back down, I will personally come up there and drag you up because there is a room over there we want to give you a gift. If we could just have silence in this place for a second. I want everyone to bow our heads. Stretch out your hand. Don't touch them, but stretch out your hand to the ones who are standing near you. Look at the person next to you. It's about 17 to 22 of them. Hallelujah. If you're standing up, please repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me. I will never be perfect and I've done a lot wrong. I want to know you. Please come into my life. Change me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Teach me how to pray and read the Bible and walk with you every day. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. amen. If you're standing, grab your things. There's Andy over there from the overflow room. The volunteers will show you which way to go. Can you guys make a way for those people? Maybe lift your legs, move your needs to let them come out. I want to see all 22 people that stood to go and be counted and begin a walking relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, church. Like your football team just won. Hallelujah. Church, lastly, stand to your feet, Steve Abraham. Pastor, please come up next to me. Put your hand up if you have a physical sickness or disease in your body or you know someone close to you that also has that too. Raise your hand. Father God, we come before you and we thank you, Lord, that there is no name above your name, Jesus Christ, and we thank you that everything has to bow down to the authority of the King of kings and Lord of lords. And Father, we, we will not name every sickness and disease. You know them well. You know the pain. You know the tears. You know the screams. You know the fears. We pray in the name of Jesus for absolute healing in the name of Jesus Christ from the top of our heads to the tips of our fingers and our toes. No cancer in the name of Jesus. No pain in the name of Jesus. No blood disease in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every blood cell, every tissue, every nerve ending, every skin cell, in the name of Jesus, we pray, be healed. Everyone say, be healed. Everyone say, be healed. In the name of Jesus. Pastor Steve. We thank God for you. Thank you for your word. You touched our heart tonight. You challenged us. Thank you. And it was right on, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, I sense that we're, we're not done. Some of you need to get your kids and come back in here. Some of you need to probably head home. But I want to invite those that, are, that were up here earlier to be available to pray. If you would make your way up here. I just feel like there's more ministry time. People need to go deeper with the Lord. There might need to be longer conversations. So if you need to go. Uh, we're going to dismiss you in just a second, but we're going to do a couple more songs. You're welcome to stay. Let's just soak in the presence Amen. of God and let God do what he wants to do. And before Nick makes his way back there, can we just thank God for this incredible word, incredible ministry.